Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back on the Al Ferrari, finishing the exhaust, and then I might start looking at the fuel system. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, those watching last week might have seen that I started building the exhaust system for the Al Ferrari, getting it all uh, ready underneath the car. Um, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above, and uh, you can catch up. And if you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing and hitting the bell. Uh, it does help us out and uh, it'll keep you up to date with all of these crazy projects. Now, I couldn't help but just have a bit of a play around. While I've got the Alfa on the hoist, I had to sort of put the flares on and put the wheels on and lower it down so it's sort of sitting roughly at ride height. Wow, it looks so, <laughs> so good. Um, it's, uh, it's the first time I've actually seen it sort of sitting on the ground. It seems so small to me now. Because it's been sitting up on, the, um, uh, on that sort of dolly for the last six months or more, um, it's, uh, it's actually really interesting seeing it sort of like it's going to be. It's, uh, it's going to be a very, very fun little car, particularly with that uh, engine that's uh, slightly too large for it in the front. So uh, going back to the exhaust system that we did last week, uh, a lot of people were questioning why I built an X pipe in the exhaust, saying that it's, uh, it's not really necessary. Again, I am admitting that I'm far from an expert in exhaust. I have very little idea. I'm just sort of doing what fit. The main reason I put the X pipe in this exhaust is to fit it under the lowest part of the car so that I could tuck it up higher. Um, if I didn't do the X pipe, there's, there's no way I would be able to get it through that area. So it worked for this situation, but apparently because this is a flat plane crank uh, in the Ferrari V8, the, um, the pulses are, are, are different and you don't really need a cross, uh, don't really need an X pipe to balance out the pulses. Whereas with a cross plane crank, which is like most Chevys and whatever, um, most V8s are generally a cross plane crank and uh, it helps balancing out the pulses and, uh, and sort of changes the sound, can get rid of some drone. Either way, it's what it needs to do. Uh, so this week we are back onto it and I want to finish off welding up this exhaust and get some hangers on it and some other bits and pieces. So uh, let's get straight stuck into that. All right, so the exhaust is completely welded up now. All, uh, I'm quite happy with how it's come together. Uh, now we need to put it back in the car and then start looking at putting some hangers on it. All right, so I've got the exhaust back mounted up. Uh, I double checked my oil line for the dry sump tank over here and there is some clearance, not a lot, but there's some. Uh, I'll put some heat sleeve on that when uh, obviously we actually get the thing in the car, just to make sure that the exhaust going near the, uh, the oil is, uh, yeah, is, is not too close and not transmitting, transferring, I should say, too much heat. But um, that's jobs for later. Now we're gonna make some hangers. I, I just jumped online and got some basic exhaust hangers. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in something similar. Uh, and now I've got to work out where to put them. I would like to put a couple um, on either side near the front of the, um, the system, but I don't want to put them on this uh, forward of the flex joints. I want to put them behind the flex joints. So I'm looking at, uh, even though it would be better further up, there's nowhere to put one on the driver's side because of all the pedal box. So I'm looking at putting it behind the cat because the cat's going to get very hot. Uh, up about here, one on either side. They're going to be pulling out of sort of either direction to sort of hold it uh, up. That's the way I'm sort of planning to do it. So now I'm going to get some of my stainless steel rod and start sort of working out how I'm going to weld the mounts onto the car. All 
right, so you can see that I've welded one side onto the car already. That's uh, all ready to go. Uh, that's for the hangar to go onto. And um, I've done the other part here. It's still quite hot, but uh, I cut it at 45 degree, welded together, and then I welded a couple of nubs on the top, which will stop the, uh, the rubber uh, hanger from sliding off. And I'm going to now sort of line it all up, put the stopper on, put the, um, the other piece through, so, opposing each other, and uh, that way I can just weld on the, uh, the bottom onto my exhaust pipe, and I have a uh, hanger for the exhaust. That'll be one, and uh, we'll just see how we go. And here we go. We have three hangers all mounted up onto the exhaust, so the exhaust is hanging by itself now that I am quite happy with. So um, we have hangers in there. It means we can move on to the next thing, which is going to be moving up here somewhere and mounting in some oxygen sensors because we need O2 sensors in this car, two of them, to uh, make sure this thing can run nicely. All right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to install the oxygen sensors in the car. Now I'm gonna be running two of these. This is a, uh, a Bosch 4.9 um, oxygen sensor, and uh, I'm going to mount it in with um, a couple of these Raceworks stainless steel oxygen sensor bungs, um, and uh, obviously I need to mount them on either side, and as per everything on this car, there's plenty of room on the passenger side, I can chuck it anywhere in around here somewhere. Uh, on the driver's side is where it gets very tight, because if I stick it out the side like this, for starters, they have to be, they can't be facing down, they need to be facing um, you don't want to run them, you want to run them slightly up from horizontal because uh, just so any condensation or anything can drain out of them. If you sit them upside down, uh, they don't live very long apparently. So uh, you want to sit it upright. And of course, up in this area here, there is so little room anywhere, but I think I found my spot, which is going to be basically up in this area up here tuck it in nice and tight, mark the spot with a, uh, with a pen now, so I know exactly where I'm gonna put it on both sides, and then I can drop the exhaust, drill them in, mount them in, and fingers crossed I get them in the right spot. Okay, one side tacked in, nice spot, lots of clearance. And same with the other side, perfect positioning, so uh, it's just tacked in. Let's drop the exhaust again and I'll weld it all up. The exhaust is back on now, all welded up. I'm quite happy with the results. So it's time to move on to the fuel system. Now, in this car, we um, have to run, obviously, a completely new fuel system all the way up to the front of the car. It's not a carby anymore, so there's the new fuel pumps, new everything, new fuel tank, obviously. Um, and at least on this car, we've got heaps of room to play with. Um, <laughs> maybe we don't, as always. So let's uh, do some head scratching, try and play some parts and see if we can actually get it all in the car. All right, so I've been doing a lot of head scratching. So obviously this is the outlet to the fuel tank here. Uh, one of these will probably be blocked off. This one will be the one I will use. I'm gonna have mufflers going either side here. So basically my thought is I'm gonna be running in fuel filters and stuff in a loop from the back here down and moving forward, having filter, fuel pump, filter, regulator. And then I need to move the fuel from the regulator forward. Now I'm gonna have the regulator in here because I'm gonna be running a deadhead fuel system. So the same sort of fuel system that I use on Harry, uh, where basically instead of having all the fuel running through the fuel rails and then uh, returning from there, any excess fuel returning from there back to the tank all the way back along the car, like a lot of modern cars do, I'll be uh, running the fuel out of the tank through a regulator and then back into the tank from, from back here, and then just running a pressurized line at the right pressure from the back to the front. That should still work fine. There should still be plenty of pressure through the rail and it should be, uh, should be fine as far as fuel goes. 
And, and it also means I only have to run one line all the way to the front of the car. Now that's where things start getting tricky because uh, as you can see here, I've jacked the diff up again and, uh, and I've also got a, uh, my supporting post under the front just so I don't tip the car over. And the factory fuel line originally goes over this side of the car and up and it comes through and there's a bit of a recess under here. So it goes behind the trunnion arm just up in there. Now on this car, because I don't want the fuel line running down the driver's side of the car, because as you know, everything is really tight in that front corner there. I want it to run over this way. So I'm going to have to run a fuel line uh, along here, wrap it up around over the top. And there is space, there is a little bit of space here behind this trunnion arm to run the, uh, the fuel line through there. So it's not gonna interfere with the trunnion arm. I'm gonna run it along here um, and then down along, tuck it inside down here, all the way along down so the side of the car, all the way down, tuck it up, all the way up and then up into the engine bay. So that means I need to start making a very complicated hard line. And this is the hard line I'm going to be using. So I went to Raceworks again and uh, I've got some Dash 6 hard line. Uh, I'm going to run this along the length of the car. So first thing I'm going to do is to get this all uh, nice and straight so I can start placing it in the right spot and trying to bend it and make it fit. It's going to be quite an interesting task to try and get this to follow everywhere I want to go in one run. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna go, but uh, first things first, let's get it straight and give it a go. Okay, so I have the rough shape in place. So you can see that uh, I've sort of folded the, the, uh, the line. Um, I made it go sideways here where this sharp 90 degree is because obviously you can't bend the pipe too sharp. So by making it curve around sideways up in the recess up here and then come back around, I can get tight around that uh, 90 degree angle and it'll come out roughly in the middle here where I want my fuel pump and all the rest of the bits and pieces. So the back end of the fuel line is all in. <clears throat> it tucks up tight up in here, which will fit in behind this uh, trunnion arm. When I bolt it back in again, I released it to be able to fit it in. Uh, tucks in through, so it follows up here, tucks in through nice and tight, all the way down around the side of the gearbox mount, all the way around the side and, uh, and tucks up nice and tight and up through into the engine bay. So having it loosely in place is not the final position, obviously. I need to now make put some mounts in there and uh, some clips and tabs to hold it into place exactly where I want it so it doesn't move ever. So let's put some little mounting tabs in to make sure it stays where it's supposed to be. I've been going through and I've been putting in all my P-clips everywhere. Um, I've been using some M5 uh, nuts that I've been welding in captive. Basically what I've been doing is I've been marking out my spots where I want my P-clips. I've drilled a, um, I think it's about a five and a half mil hole, six mil hole, big enough so that the, uh, the tip of the bolt can go through it. And basically this is how I've been welding them on. So I can poke the bolt through the hole, but using a longer bolt so I can hold it at the bottom, hold it up hard, and then I can weld around the edge makes it nice and easy to mount them in there. I can just sort of hold it into the spot, weld it on, undo this bolt, and then I use a shorter, shorter bolt to bolt the actual P-clips in. It's coming along quite nicely. Let's finish it up.
Okay, and the underside is all done now. So um, as far as the uh, fuel line goes, I've got plenty of length at the end back here where I can cut it off wherever I need it. But uh, I've got it tucked around. There's clearance for the diff to go up and down. It tucks over. There's clearance over here for the sway bar mount to go in. Um, and then it tucks underneath the car. Flows underneath down here all the way down the side, round the gearbox mount. It's all mounted all the way along and tucks up underneath. I have to do a couple of mounts under here, but I'll have to do that when the engine is out. So now let's head up and have a look at what we're doing in the engine bay. So you can see here at the back of the engine bay, that's where the fuel line is coming up. I'm going to trim it off and, uh, and put AN fittings coming up and it'll split into a Y piece and go to either side of the plenum. So there's a fuel rail on this side and another over here. And I'm actually gonna to have to cut these fittings off because these are a different fitting. They're not actually an AN fitting and weld on a new AN fitting on both sides to both rails. So that's gonna be fun. And that has actually taken me most of the afternoon actually just sitting down and working out um, all of the fittings and stuff that I need to order through Raceworks to get the, uh, the rest of the plumbing fixed fit it up. Um, it's actually quite time to me working out the um, everything sort of stepping down from dash 10 coming out of the tank, going through uh, some of the filters, stepping down to dash eight, and then going through the filter, the regulator to connect the uh, uh, each bit to each bit all the way along, uh, then going through, then stepping it down to dash six uh, for the line coming through that I obviously just put in, and then the fittings that I need to weld on here, and all the fittings to fix, fit everything up. Um, it's all there, it's just a matter of working out all the different bits and pieces uh, and putting them all together. So um, we, are, we are really getting there on this build. Um, it doesn't feel like I got as much done this week as I did last week, but, um, but I did, I've got the exhaust finished, and uh, just being able to see the car sitting down on its wheels is so good. There's actually no wheels on the other side, but it looks good enough for <laughs> the time being. But I think that means uh, it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Ferrari's development in Formula One in 1950 was extensive. Last week I talked about the 275 and the 340, but by September they were replaced by the 375 F1. The 375 further developed the experimental 4.1 Lampredi V12 from the 340 F1, but took it out to 4.5 litres, which was the maximum allowed. The new engine produced roughly 335 horsepower like the previous one, but its tractability earned Alberto Ascari second place at its debut at Monza. Further development saw the 375 finally victorious against the Alphas, with a win the following year at Silverstone. By 1952, the Formula One regulations had changed, so Ferrari switched its focus of its big engine to an Indy car. The 375 Indianapolis had its wheelbase stretched and its chassis strengthened, along with a bump up to 380 horsepower. Unfortunately, at the 1952 Indianapolis 500, only one of the four cars qualified for the race, with Alberto Ascari only qualifying 25th out of 33 starters. In the race, he was forced to retire after only 40 of the 200 laps with wheel failure. All right, uh, another week down, and um, I managed to get the exhaust finished up, or at least the parts I've got. I'm still waiting on those mufflers. I'm still not sure when that's going to come. Um, the fuel system, there's a lot of development there and uh, I think I've sorted it all out. So there's still, um, yeah, there's still lots of little things to finish tidying up, but we are really getting, uh, yeah, getting closer getting, every Getting to the driving stage. I can every feel week. it. Yeah. Yeah. Three. But just seeing the car down on its wheels is just such a, it's, it's, it looks so good. Uh, it's given me some extra inspiration and a, and a bit of a, uh, yeah, motivation boost to get it, get it finished up. So. It's nice. Mm. I like that. It's good. Right. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see Jeff carry on Building working his... his magic in the garage. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I threw it in the car. Like it was a big engine. Okay. When mm. had its wheelbase strengthened and its chassis. Do we do it again? Chassis. <laughs> 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 Don't wait, shall I do it again? <laughs> <laughs>
I find that combination of letters challenging. <laughs> <laughs> 